Hi there, it's Chris, Chapman the Cup Motor Legends, here today to talk to you about a helmet that is new to us. It's an Arai helmet, it's an open face helmet, and it's a helmet called the Urban 5. The helmet that we're talking about today, the Arai Urban 5, is not a new helmet. Often these videos are about reviewing brand new products. That isn't the case this time. In fact, if I was completely honest, I'd have to say that the product's a little bit long in the tooth. It's been around for a while, but you won't see it in many retailers. And the reason is it is too expensive for most retailers to want to stock. The importer has put it to us that actually most open face helmets in this market, about 95% of helmets are sold into the scooter and moped market. Now that's a huge market, ever burgeoning market, but the target price for an open face helmet for those guys is about £100. This helmet is much more expensive than that, therefore the target audience for it is small. That's why most retailers don't want to sell it. Now, our attraction to this helmet has nothing to do with the fact that it's an expensive one. That's not the way we do things. But we are drawn to better, more technical, more protective products. And at times, those products are just more expensive because they use more expensive components, they are more complicated to put together and so on. So that is why we are attracted in particular to the Urban 5. Now, when we're looking at open face helmets, it's got to be acknowledged that they are not for everybody. Motorcycles, let's face it, are dangerous bits of equipment. They can travel at insanely fast speeds. As you're going around a corner, your contact with the road is through a piece of rubber front and back about an inch wide. All you have to do is hit a slippery patch, a bit of leaves, some leaves, some oil, some diesel, and it all goes sideways, it all goes awry. And when that happens, there's nowhere to hide on a motorcycle. There's no crumple zone, there's no safety belt. And when you come off, any impact is going to hurt. And of course, that's why the clothing that we wear, the helmet, the jeans, the jacket, the gloves, and so on, they're all so important. So in such a world, it is not illegitimate to ask, is there a role for an open face helmet? Why would you ride in an open face helmet? And our answer is that we all have different risk profiles. And everybody who gets on a motorcycle, once they put their leg over a motorcycle, they are taking a risk. Everyone who rides a motorcycle accepts that, or rather, they should accept that. Mine, for example, my risk profile is much lower than it used to be. I no longer get quite such a thrill from going around that long sweeping bend without really knowing what's around the corner. Yet, I still love my motorcycle, I still love biking. And on a nice day, if I'm going up in the hills for a bacon sandwich, I would actually prefer to ride in an open face helmet. Now, unfortunately these days I don't have so much hair for the wind to flow through, but I still like that kind of feeling. But what I would say is if we are going to recommend an open face helmet, we want it to be a thumping good one. In fact, preferably it would be the very best one. Now over the years, we've offered a lot of open face helmets, but in recent months, during last year, we've discontinued most of them. Now, a lot of those open face helmets have got fantastic graphics. A lot of them affect a very fashionable low profile, but most of them haven't fitted well. Most of them are just not very comfortable. So we just felt it was time to move on. As is maybe clear from what I've said already, we like here at Motor Legends, we like open face helmets and we fully support any riders wish or right to ride in an open face helmet. It has to be acknowledged, of course, that an open face helmet is in some respects less protective than a full face helmet, particularly here around the chin area. But just because it's an open face helmet, that doesn't mean that we are prepared to accept a trade off in terms of safety and protection. We still want a an open face helmet to fit comfortably, to fit well, because there's a wrong fit and there's a right fit. We still want it to be as protective as it can be, because if you go down and bang your head against the road or some other hard object, we want to, to absorb energy as well as any full face helmet. Why wouldn't you want that? At present, the only open face helmet I've got to say that we really rate is the Shui JO, and that is this helmet here. It's an exceptional helmet. What we love about it is the fact that, as with all Shoeys, we can change the cheek pads and get the fit absolutely right. Because it's a Shoei, we have no qualms about the protection. But it has to be admitted that this helmet is not a classic 
full jet helmet of the style that most people still want to ride in. And this helmet, lovely as it is, on certain bikes, it just does not look right. It doesn't really work particularly well with goggles. You can wear goggles with them, but it's got its own drop-down visor. It doesn't have the poppers up here or down the side, so you cannot put a peak, you cannot put a visor on the helmet. It's just not very cafe racer, let's say. By contrast, the Urban 5 that we're going to talk about today is. So this is the aforementioned Arai Urban 5, and it is a classic cafe racer helmet of the style that I've been describing, a proper full jet helmet. So here we can see it with goggles on the front. There's a goggle strap at the back. Most goggles, I've got to say, have silicon on the inside of the strap, so you often don't need the strap at the back, the retainer at the back, but this helmet looks fantastic with goggles on. This is the same helmet, obviously, with the poppers on the edge of the visor, you can put a peak on that. It's also got two lower poppers, so if you wanted to put a full visor on, you could do that equally. Now, here at Moto Legends, we've recently invested in a very high-tech piece of equipment. It's gonna allow us to show all of our products in our videos in a 360 degree rotation. So you can see, for example, our jackets front and back, you'll be able to see all the way round. So Graham, if you wouldn't mind, hit it please. Oh, I see, yeah. No, not sure I fully thought that one through. Um, anyway, this is the helmet, and if I turn it round, you can see at the back, that's the goggle strap that retainer that I was talking about. It doesn't have the cam tail that you get on the Shui J.O. That's a lovely feature, but it's just not very cafe racer. So this, as I've already alluded to, is the classic cafe racer style full jet helmet. Now, one of the things that I should point out is that these helmets are not made in China. What happens a lot of the other manufacturers, even though they may have factories in America or Europe for their mainstream helmets, when it comes to an open face helmet, they will sub those out to a market like China or Vietnam where they can be made very cheaply. Arai would never dream of doing such a thing. So this helmet is made on exactly the same production line as every other Arai helmet. And like every other Arai helmet, it takes a full 18 man hours to make one of these helmets and during that process it will be inspected by the quality control team on no less than five occasions. Arai is just one of those companies, they do not operate to dual standards, they do things one way, they do it the right way and that is it. So this helmet is going to go through all the same processes as even their most expensive race helmet. Now the helmet accords to 2205, every helmet currently has to meet that standard. But Arai always test to a standard that is much higher than 2205. They always have done. So their drop test is from a much higher height to measure the amount of energy absorption. Their test even includes a penetration test. Now, that doesn't technically exist under 2205. Even under the brand new test that's coming in this year, that's called 2206, even that does not have a presentation, uh, sorry, a penetration test. So this, I have no qualms about suggesting that this is the most protective open face helmet you're ever going to come across. In terms of the details on the helmet, let's just go, go through them. The helmet has a belt that runs all the way around the helmet just above the eye line. It's a piece of proprietary technology, or I call it the peripheral belt, and it's an extra band that adds strength to the helmet that means they can use a lighter shell elsewhere. It enables them to make a slightly lighter helmet. The shell itself is constructed from a mix of synthetic and organic fibers. The helmet comes in three different shell sizes across six helmet sizes. So that's two helmet sizes per shell. And that's, in our view, about perfect. Now, we find manufacturers, and there are still manufacturers out there, who will produce an open face helmet in just one size. We find that, frankly, a little bit risible. What it means is if you've got this enormous head, it'll look fine, but if you've got a small head, the only way that they can make that one shell size work on you is have huge padding. And people with smaller heads in those helmets, they tend to look as though they've got a cannonball on the head. They just don't work. You can never really get truly comfortable unless you're very lucky. It's very difficult to get comfortable in a helmet that only comes in one size. Lots of helmet manufacturers have two sizes, two shell sizes across six sizes, and we still think that is compromised in some way. 
three shell sizes across six sizes. That's the perfect mix. That's the way all of the premium brands do it. That's the mark of a quality helmet. That is what we've got here with the Urban 5. The helmet's got good venting, and some of you may think, yes, very funny, it's an open face, of course it's got good venting. But if you're in hot climbs or you're working hard off-road, your head can still get very hot in an open face helmet. So venting is still important. And what we have here on the Urban 5, we have three inlet vents here just under the brow. At the back of the helmet, we have two Venturi exhausts. And what happens is air passes under, underneath those, it creates negative pressure and that pulls air out of the helmet. Now in the helmet, around the head, there are holes in the EPS. So what's happening as you're riding along, air is coming in, air is, pull, is being pulled out and that is going to cool you down. In terms of the lining of the helmet, our eye are no less prone than anyone else in my view to talking mumbo jumbo and nonsense to try to imbue their products with some kind of technical superiority. I've read all about their linings and I have Frankly, I don't understand half of it. They talk about the lining matching the acidity of human skin. I don't know about that. All I can say is, our eye is not the kind of company that cuts corners. This helmet is supremely comfortable, as indeed are all our eye helmets. No one's going to have a problem in terms of the comfort of this helmet. One of the key things for us is that we've got changeable cheek pads in this helmet. Obviously, we've got those in the Shui JO, but I do not know of another open face helmet on the market that gives us that facility and we love that because it enables us to give the rider a customized fit. I think there are five different thicknesses of cheek pad and we can pull those out because none of us have got the same type of face, the, taint, the same shape of face, some of us are a bit jowly, some are very thin, so we can change those cheek pads, thinner ones and thicker ones, to make it fit exactly. The one thing I would say is because in the past, before we did this helmet, no one in the UK has gone to the trouble of fitting changeable cheek pads. No one has ordered them, so they don't currently reside in the UK. So the importer is going to be ordering those kind of now. We're recording this in March 2021. The helmet is available from us in three of the five colours right now. The other two are coming soon, but the cheek pads may arrive a little bit later. They're on their way from Japan. I would expect to have them in a couple of months' time. What other things might you want to know, would you want to know about this helmet? I think the first thing is that it comes in a disappointingly restricted range of colorways. There are only five colors in the range. There are two blacks, two grays, and a white. So there's this black, which is the shinier of the blacks. There's then a frost black, which is our eyes term for a matte black. This is the shinier of the grays. There's then a frost gray, and then there's a white. And where that leads us to is a situation where we would advise someone that if you want an open face helmet purely as a fashion accessory to look the part, if you want to ride around town on your bike looking like Evil Knievel or perhaps like Peter Fonda in the Easy Rider, then perhaps the RI is not for you. This is, I would say, a more serious open face helmet. In terms of the details, we've gone through most of them, the poppers, the strap at the back. It's got a D-ring fastener to tighten the helmet. I think that's pretty much what most people would expect on a classic full jet helmet like this. Helmet comes with a five-year warranty, pretty standard at the premium end of the motorcycle helmet market these days. Certainly that's the case across all RI helmets. The other thing that you're going to want to know is the price, because I've already alluded to the fact that this is an expensive open face helmet, too expensive for most relay for most retailers to want to stock. That price is £350. Now, there are other open face helmets at that price, but I have to tell you, even though they may have wilder color schemes and be cooler in terms of their brand credentials, in terms of an item of protective wear, they are not in the same league as this. Can you get a helmet that purports to do the same as this, that has the same look for less? Well, yes, of course you can. And you will find, again, better colors, more interesting colors, and funkier graphics. But I think that to some extent misses the point. I don't believe that anyone goes out to buy an Arai or a Shui because they are looking to save money. You buy a Shui or an Arai because you just want the best that you can get. And it just so happens, as we've alluded to already, that the best products are rarely the cheapest products. And in this context, I think of Robert Daly writing in The Cruel Sport. He actually wasn't talking about pricing, but I think it applies. And what he said was, there are those who understand, and there are those 
who just never will. <clears throat> so if you'd like to see more RI helmets, more open face helmets, or maybe just more helmets in general, then visit the website motolegends.com. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about the Urban 5, then if you click on one of the links on the screen, sometimes they're up there, sometimes they're down there, that will take you directly to the relevant page on the website. There you can check out the spec in a little bit more detail, you can check out availability, and obviously if you like the helmet, you can buy one there and then. Now when you buy from us, we try to make the process simple, straightforward, and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on any item of protective wear that you buy from us. Returns are totally free, and what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something to us. We have the best price promise in the business. Now, John Lewis is rightly famed, or rather was rightly famed for its never knowingly undersold price promise. We go one stage better. If you can find anything, anyone selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that retailer's price by a full 10%. If the retailer is in the EU and not in the UK, we will match their landed price. Now, there are a few terms and conditions associated with the price beat, nothing particularly onerous, but if you are going to price beat us, I suggest you visit the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. If in the future you'd like to receive bulletins from us about new products, then if you go to the website, at the top of every page there's a piece of a script that says newsletter sign up. Click on there, within seconds you'll be in business. In future you'll receive our email bulletins. If however you prefer to get your information video graphically, that is to say in this form, we'd be simply delighted if you want to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Now, this is 2021. In 2020, last year, we gave away to a YouTube subscriber a MUT 125cc machine that we had customized to look a little bit like a Steve McQueen desert sled. This year we're going to, or we are moving a little bit up market, we're going to be giving away a 250cc Fantic Cavalero Scrambler, but not to a YouTube subscriber, but to a follower of us on Facebook. So if you want to stand a chance of winning that bike, then go to our Facebook page, obviously, and follow us. We'll be giving the bike away sometime before Christmas this year, sometime in December. I'd like to finish with a little play for our fabulous little shop here at Moto Legends. We're based about a mile from the centre of Guildford, a mile from the railway station. And as I've said, it's a small shop, it's a small footprint, but it's attached to our warehouse where we have more than two million pounds of motorcycle clothing and merchandise arranged across three floors. And that technically makes this the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the UK. But we actually believe that we are far more than just the amount of merchandise we have here in the building. We're all about service, we're all about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have the highest five-star ranking in the business. When you come and see us, we'll serve you only the finest Italian Illy coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And if you're lucky, who knows, you might even get to sample one of Sean's mum's delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.